Welcome to Lunch with Tech Leaders, where we have engaging conversations about software development and cloud engineering with industry leaders and subject matter experts. These episodes are created by the Great Lakes Tech Leaders, an online community of technology practitioners. Please come join the conversation by visiting gltl.rbn.ai. Again, that's gltl.rbn.ai. Now strap in, because we're deploying to production in three, two, one. Thanks for joining us here today. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, skill compositions um, and skill sets within a team. Um, definitely would like to get uh, everyone on the call's kind of uh, their their experience that they've uh, had and or if they have any tips. Um, but to kick things off, uh, my name is Ray Welker, um, a cloud solutions uh, engineer here at Big Brain Network. Uh, with me is uh, Will Valance also. Uh, would you want to give a quick intro, Will? Sure, yeah. As you already said, uh, my name's Will or William Valance, and I'm also a cloud solutions engineer here at Bright Brain Networks. Okay. Yeah, Kyle McAuliffe. I'm a senior manager of DevOps operations and IT uh, at Aptiv. Great. And we got a couple people in the audience. Um, if they want to chime in at all during this call, feel free. Um, you know, this is just going to be really a discussion about uh, our experience, uh, anything that we've found out there in the wild that, you know, we maybe want to share and talk about. Um, but yeah, I mean, this call is really going to be about, uh, again, uh, team diversity and skill compositions. Um, so there's a couple different, you know, areas to that we could that we could talk about. Um, don't have a real structure, I guess, for what we do want to talk about here today. Um, but you know, a couple things we could mention are, you know, what what does success look like um, for your teams? Um, are you potentially maybe like a uh, in, in a hiring position uh, where you're able to to build teams or or uh, kind of make these decisions um, for the company? And um, other than that, you know, like what, what does diversification kind of look like um, within your teams? Do you look for different skill sets? Uh, do you look for uh, perhaps other areas out there that um, provide value to you? Um, so how, how about we talk about, you know, building a successful team to start with? Um, I have a little bit of backing data, I guess, that I've did here uh, regarding Amazon's approach and Google's approach. I can maybe start it off with that. Um, I, di I did find an article from 2015 uh, that Google had uh, put out there. They, they did a study internally about what makes a successful team um, at Google. And they, they really found uh, five key uh, areas that they, they identified that really like contributes to success. Um, to kind of list off those top five that they had, uh, they looked for uh, psychological safety, uh, dependability, structure and clarity, uh, the meaning of work, and impact of work. Now we can kind of get into those a little bit if if we want um, to 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 identify like you know what they mean by these. Um, but but do any of those topics, I guess, kind of reign true, to, or the, any of those concepts reign true to uh, your experiences, Kyle? Yeah, I think um, you know, I, I'd say all of them do. Um, but yeah, I think you know psychological safety you know, is especially important. I mean, you're not going to be able to give your all, and your team's not going to come together as a cohesive unit if if people don't feel safe to to speak up, to come to work, to you know be around their peers. Um, right. I, I think that's incredibly important. Um, and, and yeah, others as well. I mean, I think you mentioned, um, you know, it, work having meaning, uh, just having a, a meaningful a purpose uh, to, to what you're doing, feel that you're contributing to a um, larger goal, um, that you're part of something bigger. I think uh, impact touches on that as well. I mean, you want to make sure what you're doing is is being noticed, is being impactful. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say yeah, all of the above. Yeah, I would say, I would say like, just kind of as, as an employee, I, I look for some of these, um, uh, some of some of these items as well. Like I, I really value meaning and work. Um, so you know, I, I definitely feel better personally about a project that I may be working on that you know maybe is doing something for the greater good. Uh, like for example, we were working with a nonprofit in the health industry at one point, and uh, it just kind of feels great to kind of contribute to that, um, knowing that it's um, kind of bettering 
the health system across uh, well some part of the United States. Uh, so 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 those types of things like I I find meaning in and um, I think are, are are really important. And yeah, the thing with like psychological safety, um, I think that really helps drive innovation within a company if people are uh, able to go out there and um, maybe do something um, and, and not feel insecure about that. Uh, you know, it, it might allow for us to uh, develop in a different way if we're able to maybe go against uh, the standard. Um, but but yeah, that just kind of also goes with like having a, a clear level of communication and an open communication within your teams. Um, I would say that generally, um, Communication is is something that is a very high priority for having uh, contributing to success within a team, and that's not just like having everybody heard, uh, but more so even if uh, people do have opinions, um, kind of kind of understanding sometimes if somebody has a uh, uh, an opinion or an idea that contributes um, or is is perhaps something that's of more value, and sometimes realizing that um, you know not letting our egos get in the way. Um, and, 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 you know, going, going with somebody else's other, uh, uh, opinion in those, in those situations. Um, but we do have a couple other people that just joined, um, I see Tom is connecting and Adam as well. So I do want to get them included on the conversation, but, um, but Will, do you, do you have anything that you would maybe, um, want to add to that? Oh, yeah, I definitely agree with what you both, uh, given the points on there, you know, the, <clears throat> psychological safety you know it definitely is nice to be able to you know it's nice to have into a team that like you said you know having the ability to kind of like speak your mind and it allows for being able to go outside of the box you know the if we don't feel safe then in my opinion a lot of times we're going to go with what we kind of already know we may have found something that may be a better solution or uh, whatnot but we haven't gone down that road before and if i'm with a team that i'm not really allowed to kind of venture outside that box or might feel like i might be belittled or whatever the case may be for trying to suggest new ideas then I might just go to what I would consider the safe route. And by mm -hmm. having that psychological safety actually, uh, in my opinion, improves the team as a whole. Um, and one of the things that you also mentioned in there was dependability that I think is, while may not be as high up on the necessary, but definitely plays a big role into um, part of into the psychological safety because if you are dependable if uh, you can depend on other people doing their parts or other people being there when you have questions and uh, being able to venture out then i think that really plays a big role into you know f feeling like we can work outside the box and uh, mm -hmm. communication now that's an interesting one as in since uh COVID since the pandemic, communication has uh, looked different for many companies. So trying to utilize different tools, whereas I know for previous companies that I've worked for, it was, you know, daily standups. We kind of, all right, get up from our desk. We, you know, crowd around. This is what we're doing or this is what we're working over. And then being a, having to shift from that to okay, what tools do we use? You know, some, for some it's Zoom, some Slack, and many other options out there. And mm -hmm. do you do, you know, a stand up in audio kind of like this or in video or, you know, um, I and it's, it's interesting with the different companies and or teams that I have been a part of, like uh, some of them have complete, here's our structure, this is how we're going to do it from A to B or A to Z. And then other ones kind of more of like a round robin. All right, just throw out if you got something. And, mm -hmm. um, but I personally like the more structured style, but uh, yeah, so those, yeah. those uh, really pay or play a part, I think, to the uh, team composition, you know, that you listed there. Does anybody? I think it 
go ahead. I was going to say, I, I think, yeah, communication is definitely one that ties um, all, all those five points together um, that I think, you know, none of them would be possible without clear, concise communication. Um, but on top of that, even, you know, a, a, as a leader being able to communicate in the right way so that, you know, if, if somebody has a sprint and they're supposed to implement a new API call, they could just do that. But if they understand how that fits in and what it enables, um, it could be much more meaningful to them. Yeah. There's um there's this Amazon uh, I I learned about this here recently it was called the Amazon two pizza teams um I don't know if any of you guys have heard about this but but yeah yep. it's that whole idea of um really kind of uh, it, it's all based around communication and maximizing the effectiveness of communication by by having smaller teams um and I guess just increasing collaboration um I mean is that something uh so it sounds like you know Kyle like you you you're 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 in a leadership position right so so do you try to implement like smaller teams within your company or is it um sometimes there's kind of larger ones as well yeah i, I you know i'd say throughout my career I, i've been on very small one person teams to, to larger ones um mm -hmm. and, and there is you know um from my experience a certain um threshold which is around you know the two pizzas team is you need you know no team should be larger than uh it takes two pizzas to feed right and so yeah. you know i find around seven to be um towards the upper limit that that anything more than that um everyone becomes a little less effective it's it's harder to to manage and to lead and the uh communication and cohesiveness of the team um you know can start to degrade as well uh so yeah my my experience uh, smaller teams have been um you know tighter and and a bit more successful and I guess what I'm going with that as well is it, it allows like you know, we have like a tradition we had a older traditional approach of like siloed development work where perhaps uh, certain teams were aware of uh, different aspects of you know an application moving to production or whatnot or um, so it seems like kind of with this increase in communication we kind of have the shared responsibility model now uh, where where everyone's kind of aware of the changes that are 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 being put into production or maybe impacting you know uh, these various levels of environments. So so that's interesting that like e even with the smaller teams, um, do you guys also um, keep other teams in the loop of what's kind of going on? Well, yeah, definitely. So I think, you know, it, it's interesting because another thing, you know, I've experienced over time has been just the notion of project-based teams versus competency-based. Um, and, and so, you know, do you have, you know, uh, people from different roles, you know, in a project team able to work cohesively as one unit from requirements gathering through, you know, deploying and maintaining in production, or are those separate teams you're working to coordinate on, on more of a competency uh, team-based approach? Um, I, I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong answer. Yeah. Uh, both work, can work in their own um, uh, methods, but um, the, the same thing's true is, is you need to communicate those. Uh, the communication cross-functionally is extremely important. I think if you can succeed at that, um, regardless of which two model you, you, you use or are operating in, you, you can be successful. Okay. So I guess that kind of touches a little bit on um, diversity as well. So within teams, people have uh, they have diverse they are diverse in their skill sets as well, um, and that kind of you know that 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 ties back to the dependability. I guess is what I was uh, trying to get at here is that um, I, I do think it is okay in some aspects to be dependent upon others if they are stronger in a skill set than you know maybe a a member of the team that is a little bit weaker. Um, so I, I I could see that, uh, and that that kind of you know goes to the idea of you know you are only as strong as your weakest link. So increasing that level of communication and, and dependability, um, kind of on your uh, for others to be dependable on you as well as you to be dependent upon others, um, kind of having like work for those who are maybe um, know that one area a little bit more specifically. Like, is that kind of a approach that you take to maybe like, you know, if, if you're doing an agile approach, if you have a card that's like specifically related to networking, rather than giving that whole networking related topic to maybe somebody who's a little bit more green or a little less fluent in the networking workspace, you maybe had it to somebody who's able to take on that work and just knows it a little bit better, even though they might be a little um, more I guess, uh, swamped with work. <laughs> so, yeah. I think, right. you, know, if you, you, you really have to look at the task at hand. Like I, I like the approach of, um, uh, the project-based teams, but yeah. that's only really, you know, that's only, only makes sense if you have project-based work. Right. So if your organization 
is, you know, kind of got one product offering or maybe they see themselves that way. Um, <clears throat> you know, the uh, things could be kind of like, okay, everybody kind of just sits in their own, you know, I guess silos, great, great way for, uh, word for it. Um, and then, you know, things kind of just operate in that manner and everybody's part of one like overall, you know, project uh but if you've got if you can identify these smaller initiatives right and put you know the you know, two pizza team type uh group together where you've got um you, know, you you then have to take a look at like what are what are you actually building right if it's mm -hmm. if you're building a bunch of infrastructure for something like maybe you you have uh you know or you know doing something like a, a super slick dr or something like that you might have more of an ops team Right, that but you have liaisons or you know partial members from a development team, and vice versa for development development work. Right, when we're building out a greenfield app, what I see a lot is we have like maybe one fifth uh, ops to dev, and then like a one fifth QA to dev, um, and that seems to be all right. I would say the team is still kind of large, but you know it depends on the project um and like how like um i guess where i'm going with this is it like how much of what what type of role you put on a project kind of always depends on um what you're actually building okay so yeah really the larger task at hand um and kind of divvying up the teams based on yeah that type of work yeah okay yeah, in uh, the context of like someone being more green than another person, you know, my favorite has been to uh, maybe give like when I was a manager in in my past, I did like I would give someone that was more green something to do, but I would specifically assign a person that had a lot more knowledge in that area, be like, this is what I'm giving them, and just kind of like. If they don't already know one another, kind of greet them to one another and be like, this person's here to help you. And uh, that person that usually is more skilled in an area, they teaching other people is really not always like their second nature. So kind of giving them the direction on, you know, like in today's world, like, all right, both of you load up in a Zoom and share a screen and just kind of collaborate with one another, or at least set aside times to collaborate with one another and just kind of have, and I would probably guide that more experienced person to be like, all right, so kind of have the green person drive and as needed, give them direction. But, uh, and, and that would help your team at least and grow in a in that field or at least my experience that has worked out pretty well in that part so it's like a reverse job shadow right you know you, you have the green guy come in and do the job and then you have the actual person who's who's there kind of looking over your shoulder <laughs> yeah and you know in many cases it'll work out great uh you also kind of in the same way are developing that team bond, like especially in the world that's post pandemic, where you're not rubbing elbows with one another, that shadowing you're creating also that uh, bond with one another, which, you know, in the grand scheme of your uh, team performance, it develops character for the whole team. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, I, I think that's really good. It's it kind of is a sense of collaboration in a way. Um, and it also, you know, it allows for somebody to get up to to get up to speed. Um, I, I know that's how I operate best is uh, trial by fire in a way in a lot of ways. That's how that's how I learn is by doing. Um, so um, yeah, that's an interesting approach. Um, yeah. Hey, Tom, I saw that you joined as well. Um, do you have any uh do you have anything you want to add to this here so far yes sorry i missed the beginning there uh my slack was uh tied to a previous um job that i had so no worries. um company so yeah i uh don't know what was discussed in the beginning there but yeah i've uh 
had a lot of dealings with this over the past year or two, right, and, and how to, to, to organize our teams and, and things like that. And um, for me, the biggest thing uh, came down to centering the teams around delivering value, right, whether that's internal or external to the customer, right? And from there, like, it starts with the externally to the customer, um, and you need to have, you know, not, not everything on that team, but they need to be able to know what is needed to deliver value to that customer. And then from there, if they don't have that skill set, then it's, you know, kind of contracted down, right, to another team that maybe is um, more specialized, right, and, and can handle something. Um, but it's still the ownership still flows up to a central team that's doing something. Uh, and that kind of allows, like, I heard, you know, you're talking about um, whether it's project-based or, you know, some sometimes uh, you don't have that, right? And you have to be competency-based if it's, if it's a bunch, and then you kind of do have silos. Um, but, you know, if, if the value still flows up or the, the ownership still flows up to that one team um, that's accountable for that value that they're delivering, that it still – kind of eliminates the silo because you can grow and have the, those different competency teams and things like that, but it's still flowing up that, that ownership and responsibility to, uh, to a single team. Uh, just, just wanted to weigh in on that. With, with that approach, how do you find the level of communication uh, between say the ownership team and maybe the specialized team? Is there, is there a level of communication that kind of tries to get the uh, both teams, I guess, to understand the whole picture? Uh, yeah, the like more, better than communication is just the transparency, mm -hmm. right? Making sure everything is documented very well um, and not so much, you know, relying on just, you know, bits and announcements and notifications of information, just making sure, you know, what everybody is working on is well documented, you know, transparent, everybody can see it. Um, that's, that's the, the biggest enabler, right. Of the, the communications, uh, in, in my eyes. You guys, so so, that, so you where got everyone you. can see it, right. Where it's, yeah. Like a, a portal or intranet or, um, yeah, where everyone can see that flow or JIRA or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah that go, that that kind of answers my question i had you know it was going to be do you have any tools or you know recommendations uh in terms of how to achieve better transparency between that and and yeah like an agile approach and using using jira seems like um you know that that's a that, that's a great approach overall yeah so what i've seen work good is whatever the team wants to use or whatever they're like specialized in within the team is fine but there needs to be a bigger overall tool, you know, across the organization where, you know, it's, everything is transparent and visible. Um, you know, like, you know, smaller tools, like one team maybe really likes Trello or something. Um, but at least the bigger picture and what they're working on and links to it, right, needs to flow up to, to some tool to, to organize it, right, show transparency across the, the whole organization and what projects are going on, where things are at. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, yeah, that provides some structure and clarity so that, you know, every, everything's well documented. There's a plan of execution and, you know, what needs to be done is described. Um, I, I think that really, yeah, it does contribute to having um, successful uh, time to market as well as just, you know, envisioning success within a team. I know that if I'm giving something that it, if I'm given something that is very well documented, um, you know, you're going to go in feeling a lot more uh, you're going to go in feeling successful <laughs> rather than if if it's it's incredibly vague you know there there's a lot of uh time to get spun up on uh maybe what the greater issue is at hand or whatever needs to be completed so um you know increasing uh transparency between like what the ultimate goal is as well as what needs to be done to kind of achieve this leg of that work like that's that's huge yeah, so, yeah. So, i mean so you can see the the, the sales process to the marketing to, to everything right and and how it ties in and um yeah just being able to see that that bigger picture i i think yeah that transparency really enables 
um, the better, but it really is the, the, the glue for the communication. Yeah, you, you bring up an interesting part is the sales process. And I, I, I don't feel like that's something that's generally something that's communicated too much to maybe like the development team. Um, something could maybe be sold to them, but uh, the work that needs to be done could be maybe different than what was sold initially. So um, kind of bridging that gap between uh, what what is being um, offered and what needs to be delivered. Like I think yeah, just making sure that there is a clear delineation there and that everybody's on the same page. Like that, that's important to having, um, you know, a, a successful project overall. So. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree. I was working on a project where that was, uh, was an issue, right? They worked on it for months and then I was like, okay, let's go to sell it. And it's like, well, we can't sell it. Like, you know, there's, <laughs> there's no way to provision it. Uh, so for our sales team, so. Yeah, yeah all that and like having good sales engineers that are able to speak at a development level uh, is also super important so that sales doesn't go and sell something that's not not possible to be created in the time allotted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't think it's 100% feasible to, you know, have the full development team always in on every sales decision. And I don't think it needs to be, they don't, they don't no, need to be involved in there, but, but to have maybe, um, like a like a KOL or something like that who who's able to bridge that gap and and communicate between both sides um you know that that's definitely important a sales engineer as you mentioned Derek yeah it's good to have somebody like that um yeah and and you don't really need to have like the a, a specialty or whatever in every meeting right if you have that good transparency where you can just yeah. see it especially at the higher levels and we're kind of and then having a breakdown um yeah Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great overall. I mean, really what we talked about, Tom, just to kind of fill you in a little bit was we talked about like what what it takes to build a successful team. What what does that look like? I shared a, um, a little bit about what Google found in an in a internal study, um, Amazon's two pizza team approach. Um, and we kind of just we, that's what we talked about so far. And you transitioned in really well. Um, we are kind of getting close to time here, though, and I do want to give uh, everybody an opportunity to, you know, give any last minute thoughts or anything that they wanted to share during this. Um, so, yeah, is there anything that anybody would like to share here before we hit um, hit our time? Any 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 words of wisdom? Um, <laughs> nothing. Okay. Any last items we want to discuss overall um, that are burning, you know? I think, you know, one thing worth mentioning is it's, it's a process of trial and error. Um, you're, you're going to try things like anything else. You're going to want to iterate over them, have some clear metrics to figure out what works, what doesn't. Um, and there's no, you know, cookie cutter approach to building the perfect Tinty team, that it's different, you know, per organization, uh, you know, per job function. Um, and it's just something that you continue to try to get better at over time. Yeah, um, agreed. And I think I just wanted to throw out like a, a probably a good follow-up discussion at some point in the next few months would be um, talking about how, how you hire good engineering teams. Yeah, that sounds like a great topic. All right, well, with that, um, yeah, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, I think we had a really, uh, overall, we had, some, we had some great insight from everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys being here and we'll talk to you again here soon. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Yeah.